Welcome back to Anointed Fire. My name is Tiffany Buckner and today's message is frustrated with weight. Now I've been on a hiatus because I just relocated. I'm now living in Georgia. I moved from St. Petersburg, Florida and I'm now in the Atlanta area. So I'm excited about it and everything but one of the things I want to talk to you about is being frustrated with the weight and this message came because I just logged in after being offline for about a week and I noticed one of the comments and um, I want to address this message to you Sparklight79 asking me where is the message for the women who are spirit filled waiting and seeking first the kingdom of God and the Christian men are out there chasing marrying a Jezebel because they don't want a woman who's on fire for God and can see in the supernatural realm where is that message at because I haven't seen or even met any spirit filled men who are single with spirit filled women or even wanting them. There is a lot of women that I know who are doing all of these things right in their hearts and still getting passed by. Could it be just timing? And of course, this is a message that's out of frustration. This is a question that a lot of women are asking. And the reason they're asking this question is because a lot of women are following the Bible. They're trying to do everything that they think is right in order to get their God ordained husband. But at the same time, they're watching these men pass them by and they're saying, what about me? And they see this man over here with this woman who is clearly not serving the Lord. And this man calls himself a pastor or an evangelist or whatever he calls himself, but he is seeking somebody who is clearly not serving the Lord. And a lot of women are asking that question. A lot of women want to know why are they getting passed by? And I want to answer that question for you. And I'm going to try to make this message real short. First off, let's talk about a tree. If you go out and let's say you decide to plant an apple tree and you take that seed and you put it in the ground. You take that out there and you water it. Now you're doing what's right. You put it in fertile ground. You are pouring water on it. You planted it in the right season. So now you have to wait for that tree to grow up. You have to wait for that tree to mature. And that's not fun. You know, all of us know that's not fun because it can take years for that tree to grow up and mature and to start to produce fruit. It can take a lot of time. Now, if you get impatient with that tree, the first thing you're going to do is go into the ground and you're going to pull up that tree. You're going to turn the dirt because you're trying to figure out why it's not growing. You're going to try to figure out why I don't see a stem yet. Why don't I see a bud yet? And if you keep pulling the seed out of the ground, what you're going to do is you're going to kill the seed. So many of us do that. What we do is we try to do all of the things that we think are right by God, but then we don't understand that we keep looking back trying to see where he's at. Where is Mr. Goddardain? And the whole time you're doing that, you're constantly taking that seed out of the ground rather than focusing on what you should be doing in this hour and understanding that everything underneath the sun operates through seasons. It goes through seed time harvest, seed time harvest. We have to understand that everything that happens is seed time and harvest. Now, I talked about on the message how God has a specific man for every woman. Now we know that we got to get ready and what have you. And God won't send him until we're ready. But one of the things we tend to forget is that he has to get ready too. Sometimes it can be that you're ready, but your husband isn't ready. And God's not going to just send you anybody. Understand that you are some man's rib. And as I explained in another message, you can go out there and choose your own husband. As long as he is spirit filled, he is saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit. He is following God. He's single. You can go out there and get your own husband and marry him. But because he's not the one that God chose for you, God won't call it a sin. But at the same time, you won't reach your maximum potential in the earth realm with that man because he's not the one that God had for you. So what you're going to do is that both of you are going to grow to his limitations because he's the head of the home. You're going to go up to his limitations and that's going to be it. You may even spurt past him a little bit, but you're going to have to deal with a lot of issues that you wouldn't have had to deal with with your God ordained husband had you waited. Now, please understand we can go out here and we can get ready. We can get our minds ready. We can get our hearts ready, but we still have to wait for the men to get ready. I had a friend that uh, called me up on the phone one day and she's been single for a long time. And I do know that over the years, you know, when she first started her single walk, she was fornicating. 
fornicating and she had a hard time waiting and even when she stopped fornicating she was still looking she was going and putting herself on all of these websites trying to find a man and what ended up happening was she ended up having to wait God had to mature her he had to develop her strip her down of all of those soul ties he had to change her mind he had to take her through a process and this process because of the things she did she prolonged her wait and I talked to her one day and she told me she said you know God told her that her husband is ready but he's waiting on her she's the one that's not ready so understand now this man may be out there and he's saying God where's my wife I'm doing everything you told me to do out here I've been faithful to you I haven't looked at a woman and lusted after I'm not touching any woman I'm going out here I'm building this business I'm, I'm going out here doing the ministry you've given me where is my wife God already chose her for that particular man but because she's not ready he has to wait so what should he do the smart thing and a wise thing to do is to use your mouth and pray for your spouse what you have to do sometimes is intercede for them before you even know them that's the problem right now we have this lack of faith that we want to see the guy before we start praying for him no understand that God has someone for you you need to go ahead and start praying for that guy right now so if you're doing everything that you think that you should be doing and you're waiting you're waiting you're waiting and then you're watching everybody else get married then please take the time to start interceding for your spouse start binding up adults adultery off of him start binding up things that may be attached to him start binding up mindsets start speaking peace to him you know start asking God because see we're in the earth realm and God has given us a license to operate in authority in the earth realm so sometimes what God does is he needs permission to work through us because he works through our will if it's in his will and we are in agreement he will work through us so sometimes we're sitting back and we're waiting and we prolong things simply because we're not operating in faith if you believe God that he's already chosen a husband for you then you should already been praying for this man you should have already started interceding for this man if you have not started interceding for him it's probably because you're not quite sure as to whether God has chosen someone for you or if it's your job to go out there and meet him on your own see that's something that you got to settle in your heart you got to settle whether or not you believe that God has chosen a man for you or whether you believe that you have to choose one for yourself once you settle it in your heart that God has chosen your husband for you, that you are some man's rib, then you can make the decision and it's a lot easier for you to go and start praying for this man because God knows who he is. So you start interceding for him. You start covering him with the blood of Jesus. You start praying away any seductress and adulteress, any Jezebel spirit, any Delilah spirit, anything coming at this man. You have the authority and the right to intercede for him. Because God has already chosen him for you, you got to have the faith to intercede for this man. You don't have to see him to believe that he's out there. That's the issue. And then another issue with a lot of us is we keep looking at everybody else. One thing I notice is that anytime a woman spends too much time focusing on who else is getting a man and what they're doing, what they're doing is they're trying God, they're testing God. And oftentimes that woman ends up waiting for a long time for her God ordained husband because she has not taken her eyes off of everybody else. She's too busy focusing on what everybody else is doing rather than focusing on her own life. You see, what we need to be doing is whatever we're designed to do. We're not just here to be some man's wife and have his babies and travel the world with him and then grow old and die and make Sunday dinners, you know, before we die, what have you. We're not just here for that. We have purpose. Are you operating in your purpose? That is the major question because you got to understand God called you a help me. In order for you to be a help me, you need knowledge. You need to be doing something. Your husband needs to know what he needs help with, but you got to be able to help him because what God put on the inside of him, God is also instilled on the inside of you so that you can help the man that God has chosen you for. But if you are just sitting at home, going to work, coming home, and you're just going through these same emotions that the world goes through then you're not ready for your husband yet because you are not learning to be who you are because when you're in that mindset what you're going to do is you're going to get married thinking that that man's job is to come in and make you happy that is not his job his job is to meet a happy you a joyful you a god-filled you and he has to have that same state of being he needs to be happy spirit-filled god-led content in his purpose that is when god says 
sends the two of you together. One of the biggest issues with a lot of believing women is that what you do is you keep looking at everybody else. You're still sitting around people and watching them go after these women, and you should not do that. I don't care what man goes after a Jezebel. I don't care what man goes after Delilah, because nine times out of ten, he's not my god or dang husband anyway. And then at the same time, if he's attracted to Jezebel, there's something on the inside of him that I don't want anywhere near me. He's not going to be a man who's going to be faithful and good. If you ended up married to that man, if he was to turn to you and say, well, you know what, I'll take you instead, and the two of you got married, he would not make you happy because you're going to find out that there's something on the inside of him that has not yet been submitted to God. And because that thing has not been submitted to God, what that man is going to do is he's going to take you through a whole lot of stuff. And then you're going to find yourself feeling insecure every time you're around the Jezebel spirit. The only type of man who's attracted to a Jezebel spirit is somebody who has an Ahab spirit or someone who's being seduced by an Ahab spirit. That is not the type of man you want. I was married to a man who had an Ahab spirit and I'm going to tell you whenever you're dealing with a man who has an Ahab spirit he's going to try to make a Jezebel out of you and whenever you refuse to take that role and you keep submitting and giving him the place of authority he's going to give that role to somebody else it can be somebody in his family that's why you see so many men who are married to submissive wives and they got Ahab spirits what they do is they have their moms or they have family members that are controlling them and that family member starts to divide that home because the family member starts taking the authority position and tries to get the wife to submit to them. And then the wife resists and goes to her husband. He has that Ahab spirit, so he's going to continue to stand on the side of Jezebel. Ahab is going to always ally himself with Jezebel over his wife. If his wife refuses to be a Jezebel, then he's going to ally himself with Jezebel. It can be his mother. It can be his auntie. It can be his sister. Believe me, I've been through that. So, the thing that we got to do is we got to learn to refocus our minds on what we should be doing in this hour. What are you doing with your life right now? And I'm not just talking to Sister Sparklight. You know, this is just answering her question generally. But this is at, to all of you. What are you doing right now in your purpose that would justify your husband coming to find you? What are you doing right now? If you're not doing anything right now, then it could be that your husband is ready for you, but you're not ready for him because you have not yet understood your role as a wife. You're not just getting married to go and have sex and have babies and have somebody to help you pay the bills. That's not the purpose of marriage. Marriage is purpose filled. Marriage is a union that has purpose. God designed marriage to mirror his relationship with us. And we have purpose on the earth. Whenever he gave Eve to Adam, it was because he said it is not good for man to be alone. And he called Eve Adam's help me. Now understand that we're still serving the same God. And one thing he does is whenever he gives a wife to a husband, that wife is coming in to be a help me. That means that husband needs to know what his role in the earth is. He needs to know what he needs help with. But at the same time, you you got to understand what it means or what it is to help him, what you need to do. You can't wait to come in and try to get training as a wife. That's something that you got to have naturally. And let me tell you why. It's because when you start coming in and the two of you come together, the very thing that you have to build is trust. And whenever you come in, if you don't have any kind of skill or you don't have anything that you can help that man with, no knowledge, no understanding, then what's going to happen is he's not going to trust you with his vision. He's not going to trust you he's going to go hand it to somebody else he may hand it to the secretary at the church he may hand it to his mother he may hand it to one of his co-workers he may he's going to hand that responsibility to somebody he trusts that's going to start the destruction of your home because the house divided cannot stand so one of the things that you have to do is you got to let god develop you spiritually and mentally so that when he comes in you can be a helpmate to this man, and that way he can learn to trust you when he sees that you know what you're doing. No, you're not going to know everything, but you're going to know a lot. And I'm telling you from a woman who's been married before, there are some things that God puts on the inside of you that's going to wake up all of a sudden when there's a need in your husband. So whenever your husband comes along, you don't need to be sitting there and the, he's coming to you and he has a question or he needs help with something, and the two of you are looking perplexed. He needs you to be able to look and say, hey, baby, I got that. No. This is what you ought to do. He needs a woman who is wise. So please, ladies, don't just sit back and wait on your husband. Don't just sit back and talk about, well, um, 
I'm serving God. I'm being celibate and, you know, I'm not entertaining any men and I'm going out here and I'm ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And, you know, I don't understand why I'm having to wait for so long because it's that mindset that may be keeping your husband away. Don't just wait, get in your purpose, get in what God designed you for. Go do what it is God told you to do. If he, if you don't know what your purpose is, then you need to get on your face and ask God, God, what is my purpose? Show me my purpose in the earth realm. God, lead me into that. And I'm going to tell you something. As a woman who started to operate in her purpose, there's so much on the inside of me that I have not tapped into yet, but I have tapped into my purpose. And I'm going to tell you something. When you get in your purpose, you won't be so focused on a man. You can ask any woman who's operating in her purpose. You won't be so focused on finding a husband. You're going to be too busy focusing on what it is that you have to do because you're going to find yourself feeling content and happy. You're going to want to build that in which God has given you to build. If you're focusing too much of your energy on a husband and other people who are getting married, you got too much time on your hands, which means you're not in your purpose, which means that you are the one causing the delay. Understand that God doesn't send a husband just because you're impatient. God doesn't send a husband just because you're going out doing a bunch of religious works or going out here and you're trying to serve him to get a husband. You got to serve God because you love him. That's one of the things he had to deal with me about. You have to serve him because you love him. Everything you do has to be done because you love and fear the Lord and you want him to be pleased with your life. If you're doing things just because you want a husband, you're not doing it for God. So your love for God has not matured yet. Your love for yourself is greater than your love for God. So you're out here doing a bunch of religious works trying to move God and that doesn't move God faith moves God your love for God moves God so whenever God sees that you love him with your whole heart and you are willing to be alone for the rest of your life if it was necessary to serve the Lord then God will say you are ready for a husband because guess what you won't put that man before me but whenever he sees that you're sitting back and you got to understand he sees your heart God, God doesn't communicate with your face he communicates with your faith he sees your heart and whenever he's looking at your heart the thing is the heart is like a radio it's got a play button on it you can say anything you want to say with your mouth and God knows that we can tell a lot easily but he goes in he looks directly at their heart and he hit play let me see what's on the inside of your heart and what starts to spill out is I want a man I've been out here and I've been doing all of this stuff trying to get a man I was in church Sunday looking at everybody I didn't even get the message because I was too busy looking at a guy who came into the church who I'd never seen before he looked handsome I was looking at his wedding finger to see if he was married oh and I went and did this and I did that but yet and still with your mouth you're saying God I praise you I honor you Lord I serve you Lord I want you more than anything but when he hit play on your heart your heart is saying something different pay attention to what's on the inside of your heart that was one of the things I had to do was I had to deal with my heart because God showed me one time I had started operating in false humility and I didn't even know that I was see when I heard the word false humility I thought it was just a word I didn't pay attention to it until God had to address me and when he addressed me I had to learn to address what was on the inside of my heart and the hardest thing for me to do was to confess that it was there because for me to confess it I felt like if I said it then God was going to condemn me but no what I was doing was I was doing what Christ Jesus said he said cast that burden upon him so I confessed my sin to him and I asked him to deliver me from it I repented of that sin and God delivered me so ladies don't just sit back and wait on God for your husband because that's just one of the biggest mistakes that so many Christian women do is they get up and they go to work every day they come home bathe the kids help the children with the homework clean up the house cook and read their Bibles and say, well, I'm doing everything God wants me to do. I'm not fornicating. I'm not doing this. You're not in your purpose. You're not just a mother. You're not just a woman. You're not just a wife. There is so much more to you. You may be a business owner. You may be an author. You don't know what God has called you to be. You may be a minister of the gospel. What is it that you are called here to do? And I'm going to be bold enough to tell you, if you have not figured out who you are in Christ Jesus, your husband can't find you. Your husband has to find you in your purpose with your understanding. Otherwise, he's going to find a woman who's going to pull him away from his purpose because she's going to think his purpose is to make her happy. This man may be out there ministering the gospel, writing books, starting businesses, and doing everything he needs to do. He's a busy man. If you're not in your purpose, what you're going to do is you're going to spend too much time nagging him, talking about, you don't spend that much time with me. You're always trying to write this book or that book. Why you don't spend time with me? Because you think 
that his job is to make you happy. No, when your husband comes, you should already be happy and content. That's the thing that we have to be, happy and content. And when God sends the husband, he's going to send a man who's happy and content. And the two of you will be so busy in your purpose that the two of you will work together in purpose. You see how that works? It's not that he's going to be over in the corner doing his own thing and you doing your own thing. The two of you are tied together as one. Your purposes are united. So you won't even notice that he's busy because you're going to be busy with him. Because the two of you are going to be working together. So if you're not in your purpose yet, then you can't expect God. God to send you a husband. You got to stop praying and saying, God, where's my husband? Send my husband. Sometimes you need to change your prayer language. Some things you got to come out and say, God, I got this stronghold. I need to be delivered from this. God, what's my purpose? God, what you want me to do today? Today is June 13th. What do you want me to do today? What is it that you have on your schedule for me to do today? Lord, is there anything that I need to be delivered from? Show it to me. That needs to be your prayer language. And when you start praying like that and you start trying to get to know God better and let him purge you of what's on the inside of you, I can sit here and guarantee you that your husband's going to come a lot faster than he would have came had you just continued to come home, clean up, cook, bathe the children and do your hair and get all dolled up and go outside looking for some man to come catch you. You know, you got to change your mind. And at the same time, you got to remember to intercede for your husband. Because, you know, one of the things I had to come to the realization of when I go out and I'm walking every day or whenever, wherever I go, I had to come to the realization that when I'm going out here and I'm passing by these men, they don't have the potential to be my husband. Either that man is or he is not. I'm not paying him any attention because you know what? God has already chosen my husband for me. So I'm not sitting back looking at a man talking about how cute he is. I'm not sitting back trying to look at his ring finger. I don't care. When I see him, I may think in my head. He's a handsome guy and I'm going to keep moving because I have purpose on the inside of me. I got things to do. I don't have time to entertain some man who's going to drag me away from my purpose or distract me. I don't have time for that. I understand that everything in the earth realm operates through seed time and harvest. So I understand that there's a particular day, there's a season God has chosen for my husband to come find me. When that happens, then praise the Lord, I'm looking forward to it. But in the meantime, I got stuff to do. In the meantime, I'm not going to be sitting up in a restaurant across from a guy talking about so what's your favorite color what are your hobbies I don't have time for that I don't have to do that those type of things because I'm operating through faith I'm not operating through works this is something that we have to get as Christian women we got to understand that it is faith that's going to draw our husbands to us we got to be in faith we got to trust God if you're too busy trying to do it yourself you're up on these dating websites and you're trying to get a man yourself you're not going to move God because he sees you he's not going to share his glory with you he He's going to let you go out here and work yourself into a frenzy until you finally understand that he's God alone. So the thing that you got to do is you got to sit back, trust the Lord and let God do what he does best. And that's be God. You just sit back and do what you're supposed to do. You get in your purpose. You go and do whatever it is that God has designed you to do in the earth. Realm. And if you don't know what it is, get on your face and ask. Get out there and do a fast. You know, how many of you are fasting? How many of you are fasting for answers? How many of you are speaking in your prayer language? You're speaking in tongues. How many of you are going to God on a daily basis? How many of you are reading your Bible day to day? How many of you are going out there and helping people? When you see a homeless person, are you helping? Understand that you're here for ministry. You're here to serve the Lord in all things. You're not just here to get married. That's the mindset that a lot of people got to get delivered from. And this mindset is keeping so many men from finding their wives and keeping so many wives from being found because you think that marriage is about you. And when you think like that, then you are already signing the divorce papers before you even meet your husband because you're going to make this man do too much work to make you happy. And he doesn't have it within him to make you happy. He only has it within him to maintain your happiness. Please understand that you have a purpose in this earth. God has designed you to do something for him, but you got to know what it is that you're supposed to be doing so that you can focus on that and stop focusing on a man. What is it that you should be doing? In the meantime, seek the face of God. That's why God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and everything else will be added to you. You got to believe him. Stop questioning him. Stop testing him. Stop saying, well, God, I saw this woman over here yesterday and I know she ain't right. And she got married to a pastor. Well, if she's not right, and she got married to a pastor. Nine times out of 10, that pastor ain't right either. 
So don't look at them and envy them because the worst thing that God can do to you is let you have what she has. Let you witness what she's going to witness. You can go out here and get married to the wrong guy. And then you're going to be crying again. And you're going to be complaining again. And you're going to be saying, well, I did everything right. And God still sent me this type of guy. No, you did not wait. You did not respect the seasons. We have to respect the seasons. We got to. And at the same time, as a reminder, pray for your husbands before you meet them. Don't wait until you see the man and start praying for him. Because if you wait, what's going to happen is you're going to run across the wrong man, think he's your husband. And you're going to start interceding for him while your husband is out there, you know, dealing with his issues. And he don't have his wife standing in the gap for him because you're over there trying to cover somebody else's husband. Don't do that. What you do is you say, God. You already know who my husband is. Lord, I love, honor, and I trust you. So, Lord, I speak to the heart of my husband, and I call it faithful in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, I ask that you speak to him. I ask that you sever every soul tie from him that he's attached to, every ungodly soul tie. Lord God, I ask that you drive the adulteress and the seductress away from my husband. Cover him with the blood of Jesus. Cover his finances. Cover his mind. Call him for it. Give him peace of mind. Let him be content. Speak to your husband's heart. You got the right to do that speak to God you have the right to do that open your mouth and pray for your husband intercede for him and at the same time get in your own purpose go and do what you're supposed to be doing then your husband will find you a lot faster and like I said do not spend your time looking at everybody else. I don't care who's getting married around me or what they're doing. That ain't none of my business. I don't care if this woman is fornicating her way and she end up with a man of God and they end up married because I know that their marriage is going to be challenged because she went in it on sin. The foundation of that marriage is sin. So I'm not worried about them. I got my own life to worry about. I got my own things to worry about. I got to focus on what it is that God told me to do. I have to take my mind and redirect it toward God and keep it focused on him. And I got to look for his instructions. So whenever he opens his mouth and says, today, I want you to write a book. I need to be on my computer and typing quick. What else do you want me to write? Tell me what you want me to say, Lord. Okay, today I want you to go out here because there's a woman in the mall I want you to minister to. I need to be in position so I can do what God has designed me to do. So ladies, I want you to understand that your God-ordained husbands are out there, but they do need you to start interceding for them. And at the same time, they need you to get in purpose because some of these guys are ready. Some of these guys are sitting back and they've been interceding for you. They've been praying for you, but you're not ready yet. You may think that you're ready. You may have it in your head that you're ready because you're looking at your works, but God doesn't look at your works. God looks at your heart. The works oftentimes reflect what's on the inside of our hearts. So whenever we love God, the works come naturally. We do the works of love. We go out and we're faithful to God simply because we love the Lord. But when we do the works simply because we want to move God to give us something that we want, then God is not moved by those works. He'll let you sit up there and perform and you create your own little circus and you'll do all these performances and they're nothing but rituals. And he will sit there and let you just dance all around until you finally understand that he wants a relationship with you before he sends you a man to have a relationship with. Is God first always? It's not just, I went to church on Sunday, I ministered to a woman, I told this man no, and he got away from me because, you know, I told him that I was single and celibate, and I'm waiting on my god ordained husband, and he got away from me. That's not enough to move God. God needs to see the heart. He needs to see the love for him. Do you praise him in your spare time, or do you just wait for Sunday morning? Do you pray to him every day? Do you read the Bible? Because you know what? Reading the Bible is like courting God. If you're not reading the Bible, you're not trying to develop your relationship with God. You're just trying to hold on to what little relationship you have with him. And you think that's okay. That's a monotone, boring relationship. You are not trying to get to know him more. Sometimes you got to know God at a greater depth and a greater height in order for him to send your husband so that you won't end up getting to know that man more than you know God. You need to know God more than you know that man. So understand that God has your husband out there. But you got to do the things that he wants you to do. But you got to do them for the right reasons too. You got to do them because you love God. Ask yourself that question. Be honest with yourself. Don't just tell yourself what you want to hear. Don't operate in false humility. Don't sit back and say, well, yeah, I do love God. Okay. Do you love God enough to read the Bible every day and get to know him? Do you love him enough to obey him? Not because you want something from him, but because you love him. Do you love God enough to seek his face every day and ask what he wants you to do as opposed to what you want to do? Do you love God enough that if the man came along and he was everything you wanted in a man and God said, that's not your husband. Do you love God enough to let him go even though, even though that man's on one knee with a diamond ring? 
Do you love God enough to walk away from, from an opportunity to get $15 million or $150 million simply because God says, I don't want that for you. I got something else planned for you. Do you love him like that? If your answer is no, then the thing is, stop trying to get a relationship with a man. Develop your relationship with God first. We got to get in holiness, women of God. We got to just seek the face of God and stop trying to seek his hand. We got to stop trying to get something from God and trying to say, well, I'm doing all the works and I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to do. And I'm not trying to offend anyone. I just want you guys to know that I'm speaking from the heart of God when I say he loves you and he wants to know you more. He wants to court you. He wants you to go out to eat with him. He wants you to spend time with him. Where's your prayer closet at? Do you have one? He wants to see you every night. He don't want you to just be saying, Our Father, which are in heaven. You're saying this little same prayer every day. Where is the relationship? Where is it where you're saying, God, what is your will for me today? What is it that you want of me? Lord, give me less of me and more of you. Let me die to myself so that I can live for you. Are you saying those type of things to God? Are you trying to get rid of you to live for God? Because if not, then what you're going to do is you're going to get a man and make an idol out of him. You might not think you will. You'll say in your mind and you'll say in your heart, I wouldn't make no idol out of a man. Yes, you would. Because that man will come along and he will become your everything, your every day. You will focus so much on him. The amount of time you spend praying to God now would become even less because you'll be too busy focusing on that man. And God is not about to send you an idol. He's going to send you a husband when you're ready. So if you're ready, just wait it out. The seasons are coming. You know, the season's going to play out the way they're going to play out. You know, you put the seed in the ground. You can't put the seed in the ground on Thursday, go out on Saturday and wonder why you don't have an apple tree yet. Sometimes it takes an apple tree time to grow up. And one thing I learned from God is that he has to develop us in maturity. You know, we could be doing the same thing and loving him, but we still have to mature. Our love for him has to mature. We have to mature mentally and spiritually. We have to mature in so many different ways before he says, okay, you're ready for me to produce fruit through you. Because when you're ready, you're going to start to produce fruit. Whenever you're not ready, you're not producing fruit. What you're going to do is keep doing the same thing every day because you don't have any seeds in the ground. You're getting up, going home, bathing the kids, helping them with their homework, fixing dinner, going to church, reading your Bible, getting up, doing a shout every now and again. And that's not enough to move God. See, we got to know God more. When you know God, then you're going to understand these things aren't enough to move him. He's moved by our faith. He's moved by our love for him. Whenever you pray, let me ask you this. Can you pray and praise your way into the very presence of God? That means if, if your answer is no, then you don't have an intimate relationship with him. He wants intimacy with you before you go out there and try to be intimate with your husband. God wants you first. He wants you to put him first. So don't you dare try to put yourself before God and get what you want. Talking about I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. Understand that God loves you enough to hold you back until you get it right. That way, he doesn't have to turn his back on you simply because you made an idol out of a man. He loves you enough to develop you, to chasten you. He loves you enough to make you wait it out until you're ready for your husband. That's love. Because he can send you a husband when you're not ready, when you think you're ready. He can send you a husband while you're in that mindset. And what's going to happen is you get that man, you're going to dance around and be happy for a little while. Then you're going to find out that that man doesn't have enough to make you happy. And you're going to put a bunch of stuff on that man. He's going to get frustrated because he's going to get tired of you coming at him, telling him what he needs to do to make you happy. Why you didn't do this and why you do, didn't do that? You didn't buy me any roses, baby. I'm building this business God gave me. Why you? Uh, I want to go here, baby. I got an appointment to do this and I got an appointment to do that. No, when you are ready. Your husband comes along, he's going to talk to you and the two of you are going to find that you have so much in common. That's because God developed the two of you to be like-minded. You're not going to be the same, but you'll be like-minded. You're going to have some things that are going to be complementary of your husband. That's why you are your husband's crown. You're going to adorn your husband. You're going to make a king look even better because you're a queen. So what's going to happen is the two of you come together and whenever you're ready, your husband is going to have a need and all of a sudden you're going to realize that it's on the inside of you. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to smile. You're going to look and you're going to say, oh, wow, my husband came home and he was having a problem. He didn't know what to do. And I knew exactly what to do. And it's going to make you excited. and It's going to make you overjoyed. And you're going to go and you're going to do those things. And the two of you will be able to work together. See, the world system, marriages fail because the husband has his job. The wife has her job. 
the two of them go in two different directions every day because neither one knows their purpose. If they were called together by God, they would be working together. They would be doing a lot of things together. But because the husband didn't know his purpose and the wife didn't know their purpose, they got married because they were attracted to each other. They fell in love with each other. There were so many reasons that they came together. Then they found out that life was pulling them apart. He has to go out every day for eight hours to work. He comes home from work. She got to go out and work because his paycheck isn't enough to keep the home. So they're struggling and then the fight start and then there's so much that goes on. But see, I love the way God developed marriage for his people. Well, the way he did it is my purpose matches my husband's purpose. So guess what? We get to work together. We have the pleasure of working together in our purposes, meaning we have businesses, books to write. We have a lot of things that we're going to do for God. So there will be times that he may have to go out and do things that I'm not skilled or knowledgeable about doing because that's his job. But there are going to be a lot of times when the two of us get to work together because you know what? Our purposes are meeting together. Don't try to get married with the world system because it doesn't work. It causes a lot of frustration. It puts a lot of strains on marriages and it ends a lot of marriages. What you want to do is be in your purpose so that whenever your purpose is developed on the inside of you and it started to mature and God starts to give you more and more things to do, when your husband comes along, you can compliment him with your purpose because his purpose is going to be great. Your purpose is great. And the two of you come together and you become a powerhouse. You become a power couple in the kingdom. And that's what God wants for you. He does not want you to just get married for the sake of humping. He doesn't want you just to get married for the sake of, you know, having babies and having somebody on your arm just so you can go to to the family barbecue and stop being embarrassed at the family reunion he's not into that kind of stuff he has a different heart god doesn't think like us we think from the world's mindset god is supreme his way of thinking is not our own that's why we got to seek his will for us so that we can do his will and we can get his will because it is his will in most cases, if you desire to be married, it is his will for you to be married. It is his will to send you a husband and for you to be happy. But there may be some things on the inside of you that's keeping his will back because you got things that you're trying to insert in marriage and you got reasons that you're trying to get married or you are trying to put a man before God because, you know, in your mind, you think that that's going to make you happy. You think that that's what's going to make everything so much better. And that's not the way life works. God wants you to himself by himself for a while. He wants to develop you. He wants to share his love with you. He wants you to become content with him and him alone. He wants you to look up and say, you know what, God, if you never send me a husband, I still be happy just with you. And that doesn't mean that when you say that, he's going to say, oh, I'm going to take you up on it. What it does is it just shows him that even if he never sent somebody to you, you love him greater. You love him more than you love yourself. You're putting yourself behind him. And, but he still knows your heart. He still knows that you desire to be married. So he's going to give you the desires of your heart. He's going to bless you with your husband, even though you will be happy with him alone. You see, I had to get to the point where I said, you know what? I love you, God. And yes, I want to be married. I want to have kids. I want to, you know, travel the world with my husband, go on cruises, fly, fly to different countries. There are a lot of things that I want to do. But you know what, God, even if you said no to that, I'm OK with it. You know, I just need your strength to get through it. But because he knows that I desire to be married and he knows I desire to have kids, he's going to give me the desires of my heart. Because I love him, but I got to understand that he comes before me and my wants and my needs. He has to come before you and your wants and your needs too. Don't just perform the works trying to move God. You got to love God to move God. You got to fear God to move God. You got to have faith in God to move God. If you got faith in God, then you know your husband's coming. But you also know that there is something that you need to do in this season so that you can continue to serve God and not just do stuff to get a husband, but you do stuff because you love God, you fear God and you want him to be pleased with you that's why you serve him you don't serve God for a husband you serve God because you love him you serve God because you want more of him you serve God because you understand that he's the one who created you you understand that he is God alone he's supreme almighty God so you serve God for the right reasons you don't just go out here and close your legs because you want a husband you close your legs because you love God and you would never want to hurt him that's why you do it so ladies please understand that God has your husband out there he has him but 
you got to be ready in your mind, spirit, and your heart. You got to be in your purpose. And at the same time, you still need to intercede for your husband. You know, he could be struggling with something and he just needs your prayer. Then at the same time, you got to seek and ask God, is there something on the inside of you that's keeping your husband back? And as I said before, if you're too busy looking at everybody else, then nine times out of 10, you're not ready. Well, women of God, I love you. I hope this message blessed you and God bless you. Beautiful women of God, this is Tiffany Buckner. I want to tell you, if you have not checked out any of my books yet, be sure to go to Amazon.com. You can also go to BarnesandNobles.com, BooksAmillion.com, and a lot of other sites that sell books, and they are listing all of my books for sale. My books on relationships that deal with the weight are How and Why You Should Wait on God for Your Husband, Wiser Still, and Wiser Still Too. I'm going to tell you, every last one of those books are popular. I have currently 24 books, but three that are addressed to single women. So how and why you should wait on God for your husband. What that is, is a book that talks about my story. I give you information about what happened to me when I went out and married the wrong man. So if you really want to read about what happens when you marry the wrong man, if you're in a situation where you're considering marrying somebody and you know he's not right for you, or if you know somebody who's about to marry a guy who's not right for them, I'm telling you right now, get how and why you should wait on God for your husband. It's going to help you to understand what the purpose of the wait is, and it's going to help you to understand and what will happen if you don't wait now let's get to wiser still wiser still is a book that's full of stories these are fictional stories that the lord has given me but at the same time i always say that they're prophetically non-fiction because whenever people read this book they come back and they say tiffany this character was me. That's my story. How did you know my story? So those stories in those books, they're detailed. And when I wrote them, this is something that God gave me. And I give you information as to what happened to each woman. And of course, then there's Wiser Still 2. There are two volumes to Wiser Still 2. And they are absolutely powerful. I'm telling you, I've never had a woman to read that book and not cry. Women read that book and it's going to blow your mind. It's a bunch of different stories and it's just giving detailed accounts of what happened to women. They are raw and uncut books. I don't believe in holding back. So I'm telling you right now, if you really want to be blessed, if you want something to just really blow your mind, get Wiser Still 2, Volume 1 and Volume 2. I'm telling you right now, you're going to find yourself in those books or you're going to find one of your friends, somebody you love, you're going to find their story in one of those books. And what's going to happen is you're going to call them up and you're going to say, hey, you got to get this book. This is what I've been hearing time and time again every time somebody gets wiser still or wiser still too they come back and they say hey this was my story this particular story was me that particular character was me go out and get your copy of how and why you should wait on god for your husband wiser still and wiser still too i'm telling you right now you're going to come back and you're going to ask for more those books are going to bless you tremendously i love you women of god i hope Every message I've put up has blessed you and I hope it's encouraged you with your weight. I'm just telling you, I'm excited about the way I'm excited about everything that God is doing because I've made up my mind that I'm going to go all the way with him. And I hope you do too. I love you and God bless you.